Okay, welcome back to this uh, third part in the lecture on inverse problems. And um, in the first two lectures, I gave you a lot of examples. And uh, before we want to discuss these examples in a little bit more mathematical depth, um, I want to give you some basics. I want to clear up some, some basic ideas about inverse problems, really write it down in a mathematical fashion. And uh, after we've done that, we'll return to some of the examples. Okay, uh, so first we're talking about improperly and ill posed problems. So let me give you a correct definition 2.1. Definition that X and Y normed vector spaces. And usually we'll assume these are Banach or Hilbert spaces, or complete or equipped with a scalar product or something like that. But um, for the time being, we let it completely open. Uh, assume that we have an operator A that maps from X to Y. Um, the problem AX find an x such that uh, x and x of course such that ax equals y for y in y is a properly or well posed If and only if there is an X for all Y and Y, this is solvable. So there is an X such that AX equals Y. Second thing, that X should be unique. So there should be exactly one x with the property that ax is y. So that's uniqueness. And the third thing is the mapping of y to x, which now exists because we have the first two conditions is continuous. With respect to the norms in X and Y. Okay, uh, so that's well posed. If one of the conditions is violated, And that problem is ill posed. Okay. Now, uh, let me make some remarks. Almost for all of the lecture, we will assume that A is a linear operator. or a fine linear, so that's for me that's linear as well. Okay, um, then, um, yeah, um, about the function, about, about the vector spaces, um, the uh, um, usually x and y will be 
infinite dimensional function spaces. So we are usually interested in finding functions. Think of the radon transform. That's, that's an excellent example for that. Now, uh, with respect to the continuity, I would like to remind you of the following thing. Reminder. First of all, um, the, um, the operator norm of the operator A is defined by the following. The norm of, or the implied operator norm of A, depending on X and Y, is defined as the sub uh, X in X, X not equal to zero, norm of AX in X over the norm uh, in y, excuse me, over the norm of x in x. Now, uh, for that sub to exist, um, uh, we need this to be um, to be uh, to be finite. Um, it's not clear whether this is finite, so we need to have some condition. So that only makes sense if that sub is actually finite, and it turns out if it is finite. Then it is actually a proper norm on the uh, uh, on the vector space of all continuous functions because all these functions are continuous. So all these operators. So if the norm is smaller than infinity, then A is continuous. And uh, let me just give a, a very small proof for that. Um, of course, we have that for all x in x, we have that the norm of ax is smaller than the norm of a times the norm of x, and I'll, and I'll leave open the, the uh, indices over here, you know, where, where x and xy and so on comes into play. I mean, I just write it down once. Right, but no, I drop it. Uh, now assume that uh, we have a sequence xn that converges to x, then obviously the norm of a axn minus ax, which is nothing but the norm of a times xn minus x, smaller or equal to the norm of a times the norm of xn minus x. And this one goes to zero, zero. If this is finite, then axn converges to AX, which means that A is continuous. And also this uh, condition is required. Also, let me prove that just to get a little bit uh, familiar with uh, these infinite dimensional spaces. Um, if norm A is infinite, then that means that uh, for all n, there is an xn such that the norm of, excuse me, there's an xn with a property that the norm is xn is 1, and um, the norm of AXN 
is larger than uh, n. And I forgot something I just realized in this definition over here. Of course, what you can what what you can do here. Oops, excuse me. Oh, I don't, why didn't that work? No, not too. Ah, okay. Taking this, you can take the norm of x and uh, put it in, inside the, the x norm of x and take it inside the y norm. So this is exactly the same. Oops. Uh, this is exactly the same as the soup x in x norm a, well, x over norm x which is something that has norm one. So if I restrict this to norm one, then that means that exactly the same as the, um, as the operator norm. So that also means that if the operator norm is infinite, then we can find a sequence of vectors of norm one, which are larger than n, right? Because that is infinite and that, that was exactly the proof. Okay, so we have that. Now we set yn as 1 over n times xn. And all, that's all basic stuff which you usually do in the first lectures in functional analysis. Then uh, you find that, uh, of course, norm of yn is 1 over n. So that converges to zero. So you find that yn converges to zero. And uh, on the other hand, AX, uh, ayn, the norm of ayn, uh, well, is um, the same as one over n, the norm of axn. And uh, well, the norm of axn is um, exactly one, or larger, excuse me, larger or equal to one, right? Norm of axn was larger than one, so this is larger or equal to one. So definitely ayn does not converge to zero, and that means that a is discontinuous. For us, that uh, operator norm has a very practical meaning, of course, because uh, assume that uh, we wanted to compute AX, and uh, instead of X, we have some X tilde with a property that x tilde minus x is small. So um, we don't know x exactly, but we know it um, up to a certain error level epsilon, which is hopefully small. So the question is, what is the error in a x tilde? Because we, we can't know, uh, we, we don't know x. So what is the error that we make when computing x tilde? Then of course we have, as, as, as I just wrote above, it's just the same as a x tilde minus a x. So the uh, error when uh, computing a on the wrong x is smaller or equal to the norm of a times epsilon. So actually, this is the error enlargement or am error amplification. And uh, uh, well, I want the uh, uh, measurement error that we make, or whatever error we make, it uh, gets transported into the result, and it, it gets amplified by that factor norm a. Okay, I don't know if this is everything I wanted to say at this point. Yeah, that's okay. That looks good. Um, okay, let me give you some examples. Let me make another remark. 
and this time I want to give it number. Continuity depends on the used norms. And that's immediately clear for, from what I just said, because uh, when defining the operator norm, I used the norms. Um, uh, when defining the operator norm, used, I used the norms in the vector spaces. So, uh, and that was then used to uh, define continuity. Mm -hmm. So um, it's clear that if I change the norms, then I shall also change the notion of discontinuity and con continuity. So example, Uh, well, first, uh, we already saw um, um, several um, discontinuous operators. Um, and uh, the first uh, one was uh, taking the derivative. So derivative. We already saw in the introduction that uh, the operator AF that takes, uh, that goes, and then the operator A, let's, let's call it the operator A, that goes from C1 to C0, and which does differentiation such that AF maps to F prime, is discontinuous. with respect to the infinity norm if it is used in both um, in both um, in both spaces now uh, we already noted noticed that it becomes continuous with uh, if you if we use the following uh, namely, the um, yeah, uh, if we use uh, the C1 norm in C1, and uh, that's defined as the norm of F, infinity norm of F plus the infinity norm of F prime. I will also, uh, in, in the next example, I will prove that this is actually continuous now. Uh, so it uh, definitely depends on the norm. I can, in fact, make the differentiation continuous by using an appropriate norm in X. And um, yeah, that's also true. I will not. I will not prove it now. I will. Uh, post I postpone this to the end of uh, this uh, this chapter. The same is true if we use uh, it's discontinuous. With respect to the L two norm. And uh, if we so, if we use the L two norm in both spaces, then uh, again it becomes discontinuous, using exactly the same example as in the introduction, and it becomes continuous with respect to the H one norm. Oops. which is defined as the norm of F plus the norm of F prime, and this time in L2. Okay, so uh, one thing we notice here is uh, for function spaces, it seems to be true that, uh, at least for the differentiation, of course, we can make an operator continuous by uh, using additional uh, derivatives in the definition of the norm. So that's something we keep in mind, and um, I will give a definition. Uh, the next definition will be based on that idea. 
Um, the second thing is uh, whenever we have a discontinuous operator A, in the setting above, um, we can easily come up with an op with a norm that makes that operator continuous. Well, I, all I have to do is I use um, how did I do this here? Let me. Uh, okay, I, I see that I have a problem here because um, in the, um, uh, here over, over here, I defined the interesting operator as the uh, inverse operator. Now this was here, the, uh, the um, here I'm using uh, um, A as the operator. We, we act, uh, so a, a to the minus one was the inverse operator in the first beginning, and that was supposed to be inverse. That was supposed to be discontinuous. Now I'm using A as a discontinuous operator, but I mean, I just uh, doesn't make any difference, right? Okay, um, so um, now, but um, yeah. Now go, uh, let, but let's formulate the second example for an inverse problem. So A as in the inverse, A as in the definition. Of the inverse problem above. And X and Y and so on. And let's assume that A to the minus one is uh, it exists, so the first conditions are satisfied, but is discontinuous. So I'm now back to an inverse problem. This was actually a forward problem, which I had in number one. Uh, then a to the minus one exists, and it's uh, discontinuous. Now uh, define, so with respect of course, with respect to the norms I used above, so the x norm and the y norm. Okay, uh, now define a second norm in y space in x uh, in um, in x space. I'm sorry. Let me, I want to make a to the minus one. Um, let me just check what I'm doing here. Um, I want to define, 